In this video, we'll look at flotation cost and cost of external equity. There are two approaches to incorporate flotation cost into project evaluation. The first approach is to incorporate flotation cost in cost of external equity. External equity here referring to issuance of new equity. And this approach is often seen in textbooks. Now, to do that, there are two variants of the formula. So the cost of equity, which is R sub E, would be equals to the next period's dividend, denoted as D sub 1, divided by the current share price minus the flotation cost. And for the uppercase F, the flotation cost is per share in monetary terms. And we will then add the expected growth rate. Now, the flotation cost can also be expressed as a percentage of price per share. And for that, we'll use the current share price multiplied by 1 minus the flotation cost. And then we will use this cost of equity to calculate the WACC, the WAC, or the Weighted Average Cost of Capital. And we will then use it to evaluate the cash flows of the project to calculate the net present value, for example. Now the second approach is to incorporate the flotation cost into the project's initial outlay. Okay, we will take the flotation cost and add it to the initial outlay. So to calculate the flotation cost, we will take the percentage of equity in the capital structure. So that's equity over debt plus equity. Okay, or you may be given the target capital structure. Then we'll multiply it to the project's initial outlay and we'll multiply it to the flotation cost, which is in percentage, okay? Also given here as the lower case F. For the cost of equity, we will use the same formula as the cost of internally generated equity, where we will leave out the flotation costs. So we'll just take D1 over P0, the expected dividend yield, plus the expected growth rate, or the expected capital appreciation. Now, approach two is the recommended approach. But most of the time, approach one is more common. Now, why is that the case? Why don't we use the recommended approach? Why do people tend to use approach number one? So, of course, it's difficult to identify specific project financing. In other words, it's hard to pinpoint how much equity is going to be raised specifically for each project. Okay, especially when the company has many projects, it would be very cumbersome. Hence why approach one is more convenient. And of course, the second reason is when we use approach one, it will demonstrate how the cost of equity changes when the company exhausts their internally generated funds or retained earnings, and they switch over to externally generated external equity. So this formula that we saw earlier is a formula for the cost of internally generated equity. And once it is exhausted, then this they will switch over to external equity. And this will be the formula for uh, the cost of external equity. Right. So but just take note here that we use the same formula as the cost of internally generated equity because the flotation cost would have been incorporated into the project's initial outlay. Now let's see how the flotation costs can be incorporated into project evaluation based on the two approaches. So for example, one a company's expected dividend per share is 320. So this is D sub 1. And the current share price is $40. That's P sub 0. And the expected growth rate is 7%. Okay, so this is the G. The company is considering a project that requires a $200,000 initial outlay and is expected to generate cash flows of $60,000 per year for 10 years. New equity will be issued at a flotation cost of 10%. This is uh, the value of F. Okay, and the 10% is based on the issuance amount and the company has a target capital structure of 70% equity and 30% debt. Assume that the pre-tax cost of debt is 9% and the company's marginal tax rate is 35%. Calculate the net present value of the project if the flotation cost is incorporated into the cost of capital. 
So this is the first approach. And the uh, first thing that we'll do here is to calculate the cost of the external equity. So we'll take the expected dividend, which is 320, and we'll divide it by $40, and then multiply by 1 minus 10%, uh, which is the flotation cost. So 10% of $40, that means that the flotation cost is $4 a share. And then we'll add the expected growth rate of 7%. So that results in 0 0.1589. So that's 15.89%. Uh, so that's the cost of external equity. Okay, here we incorporate the flotation cost into the cost of equity. Next, we'll calculate the WACC or the WEC, and that will be equals to the weight of equity in the capital structure, which is 70% or 0 0.7, multiplied by 15.89%, which we have just computed. And the weight of debt is 30% times the pre-tax cost of debt, 9%, multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.35, the marginal tax rate. And that will be equals to 12.878%. And we will use this WAC number to calculate the NPV of the project. Right, so using the calculator, we will move over, we'll press the cash flow worksheet, uh, the CF button, okay, just press second CEC to clear the cash flow worksheet. The initial outlay is 200,000. Okay, let's make sure it's negative and press enter. A CO1 is $60,000 and it's a recurring amount. So that's an annuity. So 60,000, I will save it in. Okay, and the frequency for the first cash flow is 10, 10 years. Right now, I'll click NPV and the I here will be equals to the WAC, which is 12.878. Enter and scroll down NPV and press compute, you will get 127,168.27. So let's uh, just jot that down, 127,168.27. Right, now let's move over to the second approach. So in the second approach, we will now factor or incorporate the flotation costs into the project's initial outlay. This time for the cost of equity, we will uh, drop the flotation costs. So we'll just use the same formula as the cost of internally generated equity. So that will be again 320 divided by $40 plus 7%. That gives us 0 0.15 or 15%. So of course, this would be lower compared to the previous approach. Okay, here. The 15.89%, the additional increment here is to factor in the flotation cost of new equity. Now, for the uh, WACC, we will take 0.7, 70%, times 15% plus 0.3, times 9%, times 1 minus 0.35. And that will be equals to 12.255%. The flotation cost is based on the percentage of equity used uh, for that particular project. So here it's identified as 70% equity. So for this entire amount, we can just take 0 0.7. Okay, or if they explicitly mention how much is used, then you will have to substitute the exact amount in. Okay, but of course that amount will still be 70% in this case, based on the capital structure. Now, the project initial outlay is 200,000. Okay, that's 200,000 there. So if you multiply by 200,000, in other words, for this particular project, the company will have to raise 70% times 200,000 is 140,000 of equity. Okay, and the remaining 60,000, which is the 30%, will be debt. Now, for this $140,000, the flotation cost will be 10% of the issuance amount. So, the flotation cost will be $14,000. And this amount will then be added back to the initial outlay. So, now the project, uh, the project initial outlay, including the flotation cost, will be $200,000 plus $14,000. So, that will be $214,000. We will now calculate the NPV again, but this time we are going to use a different discount rate and the project initial outlay will now be larger than before. Right, so going back to the cash flow worksheet, the cash flow at time zero 
will now be revised to 214,000 with the negative uh, sign. Press enter. The annual cash flow will still be the same. It's still $60,000. And uh, over at NPV, you will type 12.255. Okay, 12.255. And press enter, scroll down, press compute. Okay, you'll get $121,504. Right, so if I just write the full amount, that is $121,503.76. Of course, if we compare the two approach, uh, the for the first approach, the NPV would be higher than what we see in the second approach. Of course, uh, as mentioned before, approach two, where we incorporate the flotation cost into the project's initial outlay would be the recommended approach but what is commonly done or practice is the first approach where the flotation cost is incorporated into the cost of capital okay specifically the cost of external equity because it's simple it's quick one final thing to note here is for the flotation cost that was added to the project initial outlay I assume that the flotation cost was not tax deductible. Okay, so when I just add it directly to the project initial outlay, I'm assuming that the flotation cost is not tax deductible. All right, so if, let's say, the flotation cost is tax deductible, okay, let's say if it's tax deductible, then what we'll do is that the initial outlay would be 200,000 then we'll plus 14,000 and then we'll multiply by 1 minus the marginal tax rate so that will give us 209,100 and in the calculator when you compute okay you just have to uh, adjust for this difference or I can just change the amount again to 209,100 with a negative sign and uh, go over to NPV and just recompute it. So that's about $126,404. Okay, it will be higher because uh, if it's tax deductible, means that the flotation cost reduces the taxable income. Okay, so there will be tax savings uh, arising from deducting the expense against the taxable income.